Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Collegiate StarCraft League broadcast of the Division II game between the University of Utah and University of New Mexico CSL team. I am joined by my friend, I'm Menasaur, and joined by me is my good friend. I'm an immortal kid. Uh, I used to play for New Mexico, and now I'm a gold and Terran level Protoss and Terran level gold player. We're going to be watching some games today between them, between those two teams. And uh, where are you? Hold on, I'm, I'm looking. Oh, there I'm we go. Over here. I got you. I got you. Cool. So th I watched one of these games. I only know how one really turns out. I don't know how this one turns out. Um, I talked to Lawrence Kairos yesterday mm -hmm. and prepare yourself because this is a 40 minute long PvP. You're not, you're, you're kidding, right? I am not. It's a PvP you. and it's 40 minutes? Let's, let's yes. take a look. Let's take a look. If you look at the replay. Oh god. It is 36 minutes and 45 seconds. So. Okay. So I should have got a water for this, but that's okay. Spawning in the bottom left hand position, we have our orange University of Utah hero, his name is Righty, or Riddy, RTY. And spawning in the top right position, we have our pink UNM player, his name is Kairos. So yeah. Ky Kairos hasn't been too consistent this season, he's definitely more of a law player these days. Uh, him and his girlfriend, the, uh, Sarah the Sheep, uh, they also play with other people from the UNM CSL team and kind of hang out. and. Yeah, uh, his Protoss play is, when he follows a build and it has a beginning, middle, and end, he does really well, but if the game kind of drags on, if there's any kind of weird base race situations, that's when stuff gets kind of crazy for, for Kairos. He doesn't necessarily adapt well to these sort of changes, and as the game goes on, he feels less confident in his play. I feel that has to do with not having played that many games. So you don't know, like, oh, this happened and my build's messed up now. Like, what's the most appropriate response to do right now? I, I definitely agree with that. And we see a 13 gate coming from both players. Um, gas not going down yet, and they're both gonna scout the same base. It seems no. Rty. Is he gonna take the tower, or is he just gonna send it cross position? It looks like he's going cross position for this, walls, and he's gonna get is, it right. Well, this is what I do. I go cross position, and if they're there, I don't make the gas immediately, and drop a nexus based on the distance. RTY is gonna get the scout off. He will see the gas timing. He will see the gateway come up. He will feel somewhat safe because he will see that he is opening safe as well. I wonder what his reasoning behind this was. Oh, uh, hmm. He took both of his gases, but he only has. Now he's putting three probes on each. And I wonder if it was just to figure out where to put the proxy Stargate. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, that's 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 a lot of Protoss games. Is just getting to that point where they know where they can put that proxy Stargate. And PvP is usually a more volatile matchup, very, uh, very sensitive to timings, very sensitive to tech path. Yeah. And you can get caught in situations where you both go the same tech path, like when you end up being Phoenix versus Phoenix, and you are stuck making Phoenixes just to match the other person's Phoenix. And there's a point where you have to be very bold in your transition, and hope that you don't get attacked with phoenixes and die because they have one more phoenix than you do. And Mothership Core going down right now for RTY. He's getting a stalker, his warp gave research, and he's gonna push this probe out. And Kairos chased the other probe all the way back to his base and he's gonna see that the probe, in fact, went right in. So, he shouldn't be worried about having to scout around at the moment. No, and I, I mean, we're, we're probably not going to see a Mothership Core come out of Kairos. He's not really typical into getting that. He just never has gotten into the HOTS. Yeah, uh, he's getting a star hit at the moment. Which which is very good. I mean, this is uh, definitely something I've seen him practice quite often. Um, getting that Oracle in to do damage or yeah. use it to use its envision ability in order to look for DTs or any sort of cheese of the sort. Yeah, and Robo going down for RTY. And on that note, yeah, I noticed the first game I played against Kairos because I helped him practice for this. He went Stargate. 
and I went DTs, and he missed his ability, and he lost that game. That's right, he was going against you when I watched that. And another gateway being added by Kairos, um, getting through Stalkers, and the Oracle going down now. I'm checking the rally path just to make sure that it's not completely directly to the base, because that would be very bad. And no, it is at the bottom of the natural, or of the third, for RTY. And Observer coming out for RTY as well. Um, two more gateways being added, and none of the players taking their expansions yet. I feel like RTY is going to take it pretty soon. Um, yeah. Void Ray coming out. And the, the Oracle's making its way down there. Oh. I think it will do quite a bit of damage. There's really no anti-air right now in this base. There are these three stalkers on this high ground um, yeah. peninsula by the natural, but um, and he's warping in the center as well. So just in case there's like a move out, he can force field stuff out of his base. And here comes the oracle. Center moving down. Good reaction by RTY. One, two probes going down. I wonder if he's going to get more on the edge. He definitely could have gone in a couple more probes. Not really, but, not really microing as well as he could have. Yeah, that's gonna force um, some stuff. And RTY um, sent his observer on the other side of the map, but didn't get to see much. So he doesn't and, know that Kyrus is about to take his expansion. It seems. And yeah, he's getting void rays out. I think that's a very scary composition. Once, um, oh and, wait a minute, RTY is moving out. Yeah, and is he gonna drop a nexus now? He has the probe down there. I think he has two observers though, which is odd. Um, he definitely has two observers. So, and getting the Robo Babe. This is a pretty old build. And now RTY is scattering his army, and this Oracle should be able to cast um, Revelation on this army, and that would be great. We'll be able to see everything, all the movements. We'll be able to see all the movements. I wonder if he's going to do it. Kyra's posturing now. He definitely has a larger army just by three. But those void rays, he has, I think, just one void ray or two? Two void rays, which are gonna do some damage in this uh, Immortal and the Colossus that comes out from RTY. Is this Colossus almost out? Is it even Oh uh, no, he's, he has his um, robotics bay up. He hasn't built anything. He's building more, he's building some zealots. And Kairos is feeling yeah. very comfortable coming into the natural right now. Going to probably try to move up the ramp. I mean, he's going to get stopped by that. And then he needs to move back and not take free hits from this yeah. army. And he's, he could probably get the mushroom. Oh, what is he going to get? He might lose the oh, he, lost the or he should have casted. Yeah. Revelation, but that's fine. I don't think Kairos could. Should. No, he shouldn't be fighting right now. Yeah. He's going to lose all the stalkers. Well, he takes the Mothership Core, so Nexus Cannon will not be available, but he doesn't have a reinforcing pylon, which is not good. And he's going to lose his Mothership Core as well, and a little bit of an overextension, but if he kills them more, I would pull back now. And yeah. he slipped his macro definitely, like, around this. Oh my gosh, look at his money right now. A yeah, 1,200 can... minerals. And, and his main is pretty, I mean, he's been making probes the entire time, but yeah. not at his natural. I don't, yeah, I don't think, well, he should be moving into this anymore, I would pull back and just drop more gateways, get my charge up, and keep producing Void Rays. Because one Colossus, and one Immortal, and you know, nine Stalkers against six Stalkers and three Void Rays, that's pretty fair fight for the Void Rays side though. And finally, RTY taking its expansion, and Cairo's building three more gateways, no forge yet for any of them. We are seeing extended thermal lamps being researched. We're going to see Colossus out in just a few moments, I believe. Yeah. I just This natural needs to get up. I mean, Kairos does has a, have a bit of a lead. He, I mean, definitely the supply lead, the worker lead. What is the worker lead right now? Yeah, 40 to 28. So, I mean, Kairos is definitely in a good position, but as I said before, as the game wears on, as goes on, he yeah, sort of gets to a spot where he just doesn't he doesn't feel confident. He doesn't know really wh where his timing lies or what he's doing. And he has a pylon up, spotting for the possible third for RTY. 
That's a very, a very nice move. So if RTLI were to move out, he could just warp in four zealots and send him directly into the main, which would be great. Twilight Council coming up for RTY. Cairo's building another Stargate. And... With a... 13... 46 workers to 35 now. Um, RTY is catching up slowly. And he's rallying more workers... Onto his... Natural, even though he's not completely saturated. A little bit of supply block here. Yeah, from Kairos. He forgets the rule of one pylon for every two gateways. That's how you're supposed to start building. And Robo coming down for Kairos as well. Plus one weapons being researched and a DT shrined by RTY. Whoa. And. This could do some damage, because there is no detection yet. The robot's going to come down soon. Hopefully he gets an observer first. He doesn't even have any forges yet. Yeah, and RTY slowly crawling back into this game. Um, a pylon on the right side of the map, and hopefully if we see the observer, the observer's going to come down. Dark's probably not going to finish in time, and... Phoenix transition now. I'm not really sure if I like this for Kairos, unless he's going to start harassing with those. Yeah, I don't, but I don't, I don't see why either. Void rays are so good in, a, in a, just a straightforward yeah. um, engagement against a Protoss player. Yeah, and Kairos just macroing up. Um, he probably should take a third now since RTY cannot spot that. And he's going to move out now. And hopefully, I don't know where his observers rallied. His observer is with his army, and the DT is going to do some major damage. Oh, gosh. And there's yeah. a lot of probes in this in this uh, natural right now, too. Yeah. 24 probes. And oh, here comes that DT. Or prism being built. And here comes the DT directly to the main. He And four DTs being warped in. Wow. And now Kairos could probably engage this army. And just think, and, and destroy it. In his position, yeah, I see all my probes are dying. Move probes away, build a nexus somewhere, and go. Just screw it. All in from here. And, and he looks like that's what he's about to do. He's going to move in. Yeah, the phoenixes target the, Col the Colossus, push him back, and then drop Carnage. He's not getting the Zealots for though, and he's but he is yeah. doing the charge and killing a lot of those, but getting a, a Nexus Overcharge, which he can definitely take this fight. Yeah. He has enough stuff to take it. He just needs to get rid of all these Colossus and not focus on the Nexus. Right. Yeah, he just needs to kill the units. Yep, uh, now he can start picking up units, and I'll pick, pick up, use the Gravitron Beam, and an interesting... A base freeze kind of thing, and it, I am super shocked of why this game ended up being a 30-minute game. Like I hope he Kyrus didn't pull back. Like he should build a nexus right in his. Wow. He's building a nexus right there, and he's so just telling most of the stuff to go back right now. But he needs to just hold this position. Oh, he's building a nexus right on the third and. He could probably use his, like, what's the units out? 39 workers for R2I, 20 for Kairos, so the army supply in advantage for Kairos, and he's rallying his probes back to his base. And he could move in with his Phoenix Void Ray army, like, he would have this game won. He should move his observer down and just. And it. Everything. Yep. And he's warping in some units at home, uh, but no observer yet. Oh, and the gateways go down, so still no reinforcements. He can definitely end this game. I wonder why he didn't. I mean, he has units that are just fine, but I think he thinks he has to hold on to this Nexus. Yeah. But, but he's not really protecting it. He's not microing right now. He should. Not, there we he go. He has an observer. There you go. He picks up. The DTs. And picks up one of his own probes accidentally. Yeah. And Kairos just has to 
Oh, that's why. RTY takes another Nexus, and Kyra should have seen this with his pylon. And I would snipe the Nexus. Oh, very interesting g game, and the way this ended up working, really. Seems like they both opted to shift for different positions in the map. And if I was in Kairos' position, I would drop a forge and like a nexus in the middle of my um, base and then just start scouting. He has a warp prism activated, but he can't really warping anything. And it seems like both the tech for both players is going to get reset. Oh. And it's basically, it's, it's sort of even. Uh, an adequate amount of probes for each player. Yeah. To restart, so welcome to game two of this best of, of two series. series. Where Kairos on one base versus RTY on one base. RTY with a better worker number, 32 to 11. Wow. And RTY building a cyber core. So many DTs. Whoa, yeah. This is what my dreams were made of. Oh. <laughs> for days and Kairos has to build a cannon and he builds a cannon like in a very awkward spot but he has all these phoenixes as long as he's able to see the DTs I mean he, that'll be his saving as observer this is a horrible move oh he has another one never mind he's fine and um these void rays should start clearing up gateways and looking for the army. There is one cannon and two Stargates going down for um, RTY. Isn't that crazy? He's gonna match it with Stargate. Yeah, Kairos definitely has to like find the base. At this point, I would move those Phoenix just over there to live. You could have killed all the probes. Yeah, like I don't see why it doesn't click in his head that opponent is not being rebuilt at this point in time. I mean, this is definitely uh, a symptom of not playing that much. Because when you play enough, you you know that you're you're kind of on top, and you know that those moments in between, like why base races seem to stabilize, there's just like this time in which you know that you need to start pressuring. You need you need to look around, and make sure that everything's taken care of. Yeah, you know, there's like there has to be a base somewhere. Three archons approaching uh, the yep. base, and. This is going to be a great move. You cannot pick up Oh, no. And what a great move. And also, this could reset the Phoenixes, and the Voiders are going to have to come up and activate their thing. And... Does it look like wow, it does definitely that much. great play by RTY. Yeah, just making turning all of those uh, and DTs into something Kyro's that could still work. still not looking for the base. Um... And now two Phoenix is being produced at a time. And finally sends a Phoenix out. A little bit late, like ten minutes late on the Phoenix move out, but at least he he gets it done. And he's gonna see where the base is now. And this is where he's like, aw oh, fuck, on a moment. Mm -hmm. RTY is taking a second base right now, very yeah. close proximity. We'll be able to get a lot of these probes in which he's been macroing out over there. Yeah, R2EY well, definitely having probably been in this situation at least once before. <laughs> and Cairo's taking both of its gases. Cairo's and RTY just has stockpiling a, money. Yeah. Has a lot of supply. I mean, he definitely has his. A, a lot of his pylons are still alive right now. Yeah, and he's got a larger army for a bit. But these Archons are so good. I feel like Kairos should have moved out now to at least try to contest this base. <laughs> but he didn't. He's got one Zealot warped in. And this Warp Prism could also be moving around the map. And here comes the Phoenixes. And they're going to probably snipe the Warp Prism. And it's six Phoenix against six Phoenixes. And... Plus one finally going up for Kairos oh. and plus one armor for RTY. Very strange game. Very, Very strange, strange indeed. The way things are stable, like coming to an end. And two more Phoenixes are going to be produced by RTY. 
at eight now against six phoenixes and four void rays um, just salads being produced by kairos i just really feel kairos just dropped the ball i mean he definitely had uh, the game yeah. was in his hands for the longest time and I hope continued you, you watch the replay and learn something about it that's really what matters learning from your mistakes mm -hmm. Cause he he dropped the ball. He had this game. Um, he should start building forges earlier and dropping a cannon. There's a certain point in the game where like you kill this natural, right? You know PvP. There is bound to be DTs, even if it's a 20 minute game. Everybody's on three bases. Someone's gonna build a shrine at some point. We do have these zealots coming up to try to eliminate all of these pylons. Um, Kairos has been having free reign on having supply, and he is yeah. making phoenixes from that Stargate that's Stargate. left over, but... Now the Salad's finally moving up, and probably the phoenix is going to get intercepted, I think. That would be so sad. D does it know? No? Is that? No. Oh, he's moving up now. Yeah, d d he did click right next to it. And... No? no. Yes. Okay. Goodbye, Now, phoenix. RTY... With a almost larger army supply, and his money's getting really high. Uh, I would like to see him, I guess, drop down a third and take the right side of the map now. <laughs> Just build pylons. <laughs> Definitely, like, not a lot happening. And Cairo's getting an expansion now. And that's, I mean, it's a good move. I mean, he can, he can hold stuff. He can definitely hold anything that really comes at him right now. He, yeah. he just needs to stay on even for And another Dark Shrine by RTY. Oh, if it worked and, one time, why wouldn't it work again? Yeah, I like... I think, you know, getting DT'd, it, like, once in a game, like, you're like, okay, let me have cannons everywhere. You do it in that game, too, right? So if DT's come out again and hurt him again that's gonna add insult to injury at this point RTY is doing a great job keeping map presence with these Phoenix going over just about every base on the map making sure there isn't anything pesky or hidden and he yeah. himself is hiding a fleet uh -huh. beacon Ooh, Tempest I mean, he, Tempest carriers whatever I'll he wants carriers but that's because I have a personal preference. And RTY sees this base. RTY uh, is taking his own third. Yeah, and these phoenixes cannot engage these other phoenixes. This is not. I think he's gonna get phoenix range. That'd be like a great move to do now. Get a nine pulse crystals. If Kairos um, isn't isn't uh, careful, he might lose these phoenix. Yeah, he's, he probably will. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh, he's just getting him away. Run and just right click, keep right clicking. Some free shots on these phoenixes. Where are the void rays? There we go. And two phoenixes just walk in. Now, in the unit counting station, we have 14 phoenixes versus 7. So, and they have plus 1 weapons and armor two more phoenix is being produced by rty he's definitely see this is one of those situations where you just enter into a phoenix battle and kairos heavily supply blocked for a very long time i think he yeah. feels he's trying to put the the pylons around his yeah put him around his natural hopefully he'll be able to keep it up but rty completely back in this game completely back and more powerful yeah, with three bases, a lot of money in the bank. Um, he can basically take the entire right side of the map and has Kairos pinned down. Like, in he's his phoenixes are in a good spot right now in the middle, and the supply just shifted into RTY's favor. It used to be Kairos with 130 supply against 90, and now RTY definitely having the supply advantage. And let's see if he's going to get some free probes right now. It definitely looks like he's going to get these three. Again, having great map present with these Phoenix. Yep. Um, Wula is asking about the Pharaoh build, so... Maybe you can message him afterwards with yeah, that. Yeah, he, oh. he messaged me, so uh, I'll send it to him at the end. 
Okay, and things are looking very grim. Wow, nine archons. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, this is a powerful army right here. This is this is the cream of the crop, Protoss army. Archons, yeah. Void Rays, and Phoenix. And Blink and not gonna help Kairos a lot. No, unfortunately not. He's not thinking of that bigger picture. At the end of the game, he's still kind of in that. Yeah, and though I got to defend right now. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, using hallucinations and a fourth going down by RTY. And this is when you know you look at this, you're like, God, how? How? Why? 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 Yeah, like, what am I doing? And RTY's fed up. He wants to. He wants blood. He's moving yeah, out. He's bringing it up, and his plus two is gonna align like. He's gonna wait for it. There's no reason why he shouldn't wait for it. It is about to be done. And he's got a DT. Just four more seconds on his plus two weapons. On his air. And the army out of position by Kairos. And this is gonna no. rip everything up. And as soon as he gets rid of most of these cannons, he's gonna be. Was there an observer with him? No. Not yet, but uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. And a uh, very bad. RTY moving really well with this Archon. And now the Phoenix is gonna focus down the Void Race and then just lift. G everything. Do it. Yep, just G every single unit. It doesn't even matter. You don't have to control, like. Yep. This whole army immobilized. And we're gonna see a GG by Kairos. Hopefully soon. More stalkers being warped in by RTY, but RTY, just pulling back. Just, no. Yeah. He won the game he had lost, basically. He did win the game he lost. So that puts us at, I guess, 1-1 one, one in his best of two? Yes. Well, no, because if you win at the end, that means you actually win. Okay. <laughs> and RTY is just going to go for the kill. And the coup de grace, and GG. And we do have University of Utah taking this game number one. And we'll jump into game number two. It's between, it's a TVZ between Vash and Kano on Polar Night. Cool. Invite Mr. Run Immortal Kid. Or did I miss you? Um, not yet. There Hasn't been set yet. Gotcha. There you go. Okay, so we have uh, UNM player Vash has had a, a pretty rocky season. I don't think he's won one match yet in his uh, in, on this in this season of CSL, and all of his show matches he hasn't necessarily won we won either. So hopefully he can bring the uh, do the impossible and bring a win against Kano, who is a platinum level Zerg player playing for the University of Utah. Wow, spawning in the top position. We have that pink Zerg player. He is Kano. Spawning in the bottom right position, we have our UNM warrior. His name is Vash. So Vash has been incorporating a bunch of different styles into his play as of late. Uh, he he usually would like to expand and then you know just do marine medevac plus one timings with stim. But he's been moving into more of a mech realm. I mean, I don't think necessarily he understands his uh oh wow this is my replay i talk a lot of stuff it happens yeah um so he's been trying a lot of mech type builds but he's not able to get that third or get that fifth and sixth gas worth of mech so he's been trying to make some mid-game mech happen and sometimes it works sometimes it does not but i mean at his level uh it just necessarily depends what he gets matched up against on ladder yeah Definitely. And we're going to see Vash moving out with his SMB right now. Um, probably going to build his barracks at 12 and his gas at 13. Um, Kano not deciding for gas yet. I think he's going to get his hatchery first. It definitely looks like it with the way his minerals are going right now. No, he's going spawning pool. Huh. And is he gonna get his gas? Yeah. Gonna get gas right now. At the same time, that I mean, that could be like an early roach. That's what that kind of looks like. Yeah. And I mean, Vash. He, I think he's gonna make that Reaper. We'll see if he decides to make that Reaper or if he just goes for those 
you know, that first marine or two just to stop scouting links from messing with his um, the move out of him. I mean yeah. his uh, orbital command. And we'll see what he builds from his barracks. Just two Not guys on gas from Kano right now. I, I don't know what his plan is with that. Huh. And Vash not opting for... He's getting the Reaper now. And his orbital command as well. Kano getting a queen now. No links in production. And definitely Vash's Reaper is a little bit late for this party. Hmm. Drone going down now to the natural for Kano. Gonna plant down that hatchery. Gonna, yep. but I don't necessarily. What is he doing with that gas? Where's his gas? Is it? Is he gonna get that hundred? And now he's he's got three workers on gas. Not getting metabolic boost yet. No, just I don't know what he's doing. Well, wow. so Bash is, does have that reaper out. It is gonna see the gas timing. It is gonna see the natural. And six more links being produced, and a reaper can kite slow links. This whole time in Vash, building a factory, getting its reactor, and a command center. It's probably going to get a couple Hellions. And that'll be really good, but um, yeah, the command center, the, no, the command center's on time, everything's good. There are quite a few links out on the map, but speed is, oh, it's being researched now, and, and it's getting a bangling nest. Well. nest. Wow, this is sort of a weird timing. Um, I mean, we're hitting the five minute mark and he doesn't have speed and yet. And Vash, um, coming in with this Reaper. Gonna get one. Gonna get one. Um, he's getting good enough scout. Ooh, and these links, are they gonna surround? Yeah, oh, they Vash is probably not paying attention to that Reaper. That happens to me a, a lot too. And two more Marines, I wonder. Another factory, hmm. Not necessarily like the way, if he's gonna go mech the way he's done this so far. But why, why, why is that? I would like to go Hellion, like get Hellions first, personally. Cause right now all he's gonna be producing is two Marines and a tank, right? So you wanna get your Hellions when you're going mech, unless he's just going double tag production or um, bio which in that case it seems like he's doing it correctly and we just have to see what he does with his barracks oh wow we do have a move out from our zerg player yeah, he has a see, bunch of links and a few why, links. Well, like if you had hellions this is why like it's better to not opt for the tank first he's getting blue and flame. he's getting blue flame so Ooh. he should have see at this point right if he had been producing hellions with his factory he would have at least four, if not six, Hellions. And this is no longer like an inconvenience. This is just an inconvenience, not even like a powerful move. Mm -hmm. He's got to lift up his. Yep. See, the difference those four Hellions would be making right now is a lot. And he's just going to pin him down a bit. Gonna lose that supply depot in that beginning of his wall, but he will go ahead and move his orbital into position to go there. Yeah. But those, those Kano, Hellions. like, really all in at the moment. 16 workers, he just produced 3 more. He was on 13 this whole time, and now the command center going down for Bash. And he's gonna have blue flame, and he has 3 Hellions, he's gonna be producing 3 at a time, hopefully. Or, well, he gets a tank now. And... I'm building another bunker, he's rebuilding his wall. And... The way he put his factory makes it so the tank has to go around all the way. Almost two larva injects worth of energy on this on this main queen. Definitely not being able to uh, get out drones well enough and just have enough supply. Yeah, and 27 and 16 workers at the moment. And Vash moving with... He has to clump up his Hellions. He can't be doing this, you know, three Hellions go and then two more Hellions Ooh. join. And then this happens. He has to wait for everything. One volley, and they're at half health. Yep. And if he wait, he like gathers his troops. He has two more Hellions and a tank, and like that's very powerful right now. Uh, One tank shot. That's extremely powerful. But he has to be careful with these Hellions. He doesn't necessarily want to overextend into this yeah. in, in a manner that it's going to really lose Hellions because he just wants to bulk up Hellions and just overwhelm. There we go. No, this is 
very bad setting up the tank like this. He has to set up the tank first, not in front of his aliens. But this works out in his favor. Bash could definitely like move in right now and do some damage. Good idea of focusing the spine crawler. Uh, yep. He He's probably going to need... Ooh, he might get oh. the queen. Ooh. Yeah, one Hellion goes down. And Vash, um, he blocked his army in with his supply depots. Definitely oh, feel like the no. This happens, it's understandable. So he and has then, a lot of stuff right now not being not being Yeah, not being valid. useful. So, you know, he has to it's in these situations where you like you get the spine and then you move away to the tower and you're like, alright. Take two seconds. Let's take a breather. We've done some damage. He's gonna get that creep tumor. Yeah. Yes. And really, Kano doesn't have anything right now. I mean, he does have those links, but he can't really put them out there. He's making more bang. I just could like put the pain right now. It seems like he finally realized somebody's pointing it out on the replay as well. And Bash is gonna lose these Hellions to these queens, but here comes more pain, and he really has to work on getting his whole army like together into steps because the speed for ooh that's a very good ooh and so many roaches You're gonna lose most of these hellions that's that's yep. pretty bad he's got to keep that that count up but he does have two tanks and he has and he's producing hellbats now and that's and it's really good he's getting another reaper that's interesting and dropping another reactor and a tech lab on his um factory he should take a third now we're seeing vash ahead in the worker lead so as yeah. long as Vash keeps up with what he's doing, he's going to be able to out-macro his opponent. Yep, and he has a very nice setup at this tower. Whoa. So hopefully, if, you know, Kano moves out, he moves through this tower, which in this map we've seen doesn't happen. It's always the opposite tower where the other army moves. With this particular uh, move that Kano is making, he should be getting his lair so quickly. He he really needs to get um, minerals, or at least spend, uh, spend... He has minerals and he has larva, but is he supply block? No, he's not supply block either. He needs to make drones. Yeah, he's making drones now. He's getting Hydra... No, lair. That looked like a Hydra for some reason. And Vash just direct rallying into the tower. And Kano has the other tower, and none of them can see each other. And Austin, I mean, um, uh, Vash has plus one are coming in for his yeah. vehicle and ship plate, vehicle and ship armor. And weapons. that's fire going down now. He, but he can't there afford is no, that. Yeah, not enough gas. He's finally getting his two best beans, and it's a two base versus two base scenario, and this is not good for sure. When you're behind, like, even on bases, that's just not going to happen. And, like, these tanks are just. You're gonna mulch up these roaches, and he's in such a, def uh, a commanding position. He can and just walk up on the screen. And he could drop the scan right now and just take down a bunch of creep tumors. There's really no answer to this right now. I mean, nine nine roaches are not gonna do it, plus what he has here. Yep. And Vash a little bit of supply block, and his. Once again, we see him in that situation where he's focused on attacking, um, probably not building stuff as he attacks. He's supply blocked. Um, probably is hearing we require, you know, more supply <laughs> depots constantly right now in his headset. And but moving forward with these tanks, not very good idea. You want to move with, you know, the Hellions for vision, but... But has a great spread, and guess it, what? It worked for Vash, of taking his first victory? That's right, of the entire season! Isn't that awesome? That is, that feels great. You get past that one hurdle, like the first victory. Like, all right, next game is mine. And from then on, you know, you go 11 and 2. Oof. That's so good. Um, so in the Division 2 um, lineup, we did have a 2v2. Unfortunately, one of our players was unable to make it. So we did, uh, you and Emma did have to forfeit that game. But we will be going into game 4 between Isgar and Mayu Dragon. And it looks like a ZVZ, um, Asgar is actually a random player on the UNM CSL team. His play is less standard for sure. He likes to, you know, just play and have fun. So we'll definitely have to see how this matches out. I think Zerg is probably his, his second best race. Um, Protoss being his, his least, his least favorable and 
Terran being his probably his best, I would say. I would really like to see him just pick a race because when I played against him, um, I could definitely tell he has like very limited knowledge on every single race. Yeah, he, he doesn't necessarily know where to go, and I think there's aspects of the game he doesn't necessarily understand yet, and that's because he's been, you know, um, a, a random player, a more cheesy player. Um, he gets he gets some fundamental ideas, but he's never executed them or seen them actually how they feel in the game. Because you know, talking about the game is one thing, but actually yeah, but feeling what that means is another. Yeah, like you can talk about you know with people of exactly how to do a four gate, tell them the build order, but it's not the same thing as executing one. And morphing into that top right hand corner we have that purple zerg player his name is mao dragon and he is representing the university of utah and spawning in the top left corner of this map we have iscar a random player who happened to be zerg this match what? an interesting thing about playing random sometimes the tip like on the loading screen tells you what race you're going to be <laughs> I can always tell when it's like, infestors can use their energy to cast abilities such as fungal growth, and I go, crap, I'm going to be <laughs> Zerg. <laughs> I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Isgar thought that when it was loading. I, I never knew that. I should start playing random and seeing what's up. I do have a, a smurf I play Terran on. It's fun. What level Terran are you? I think silver. Oh, nice. Just, you know, marines still work. And silver, I think Marie, Mass Marine works until Platinum. Okay. And we have Mount Dragon gonna see the spine pool going down by Iscar going with the 12th pool. And, and 13, Mount yes. Dragon building his pool right now. Definitely, you know, reading this correctly. And his gas is going to go down now as well. And Iscar up one drum for a little bit. And this, I mean, this is definitely not, I mean, in some cases as a Zerg player in ZVZ, you kind of want to get an earlier pool, maybe like a 10 pool, you could inflict a little bit of economic damage, uh, I mean, yeah. you have an economic, like, aggressive opening, so that you'll just drone after that and have these lings that kind of protect you, but, I mean, what it comes down to in ZVZ is at the 5 minute mark, you should be ready for non-stop ling aggression and for you to be able to micro your lings or bane lings in order to um, get cost efficient trades, then you can feel more comfortable with, um, you know, droning your natural, you may want to get more queens, it, but it, but then it transitions into either the Muta War or the Roach War, so you have to see what your opponent's doing. You should always assume it's going to be the Muta War, but if not, look and see if you see Roaches. But that can also mean, if, if someone is, you know, has two bases and is trying to do a big Roach push, that yeah. may be suicide, because you can out-macro Lings and Muta, you can make, because Mutas won't die, and as long as you keep streaming Lings, you're going to, like, kill those Roaches, and that's a, a significant mineral yeah. and gas investment. Plus, you have the Mutalisks, and Roaches don't shoot up. Fortunately for everyone, Roaches can't shoot air, for now, you know, and Mutas are just going to take that and make him run away and I think they're faster than roaches right so they're you'll just pick them up even if you try to retreat mm -hmm. no it is true uh, right now ice car uh, trying to take a one on two link battle and now microing that circling well and Mao dragon microing slightly better having both of its links chase the second link killing one already and metabolic boost Coming up about the same time, a little bit faster for Mount Dragon, getting his bailing nest now. No, I do, I do like this. This is, uh, I mean, Isgar set the pace of the game. He says, "I'm gonna do an early pull. You should be scared of aggression, but it's not happening." He got, yeah. he got his natural, and you know, Mount Dragon is reading this so well. He's not overcommitting anything. He is getting his bailing nest right now, so he will be ready to get into that segment of the game where there will be those links and banglings. Yeah, and since. Iscar is not getting his bailings. He will be behind on those money hits. But now a roach warrant coming down by Iscar. I'm not sure how well. Is it better to go ling bailing or can roaches actually win? Roaches would be more of a defensive move. Uh -huh. uh, at this point, it would be defensive. I mean, you can make a bunch of roaches and walk across the map, but I mean, depending on what kind of skilled player that you're going against, you're going to find that they're going to have lings and they're going to be waiting like. Yeah. Let me see. Where's Ulchi? Um, 
they're going to be waiting like right here or right there. And yeah, you're just going to wait till they walk out and you're going to run in and they're going to turn around. And then it's this, it's this waste of time because then the other player has so much time to get whatever it is he needs out in order to either stop it or even put up spine crawlers. I mean, yeah. five spine crawlers and lings can stop roaches. I think they do more damage to roaches, right? Because they're armored. I believe so. And Icecar losing a little bit of engagement near the tower, losing the tower, which Ooh. is very important on this map since it's only one tower and it covers the path to your base. A, a few drone losses there. Let's see the drone losses here. So just two, two lost by Isgar. I'm not necessarily. Let's see what is. So we have three queens. Yeah, we have three queens. Bailing nest, and we are seeing the roach horn. So, uh, but we are seeing the muta. Sure. Or, yeah, for uh, Icecar, which I don't think he has enough economy, and he's also taking no. the gold. Yeah, that's kind of not. That's not a good move. So um, he also got. So I don't understand. Like when you get the roach horn, that should be for defensive purposes, and even putting it by the bottom of the ramp so you can start yeah, a sort so of wall. Off. Like that. That's even better. I, I don't understand this. Uh, I mean, a lot of players. See, this is definitely where Isgar. Uh, is uncomfortable with being random because this is the point in the game where he doesn't necessarily know what to do because he can't the, the time of cheese is over this is the time where you have to have kind of you know way better control understanding yeah. where your money is going and he's getting a scout is that what he's doing and losing yeah, all his links in the process but uh, yeah just not having the money and the gas for this right now I mean come on his, your, your, your main is not saturated your natural is looking good but it, you do need that uh, third and fourth gas he's getting a like a bunch of minerals, wow, producing a bunch of links now, too. I think the moment for aggression is over when he first walked in. Knowing that he has Bane links, it's just... And you can see that, you know, Mal Dragon has the tower controlled. Mm. And some links are coming in, maybe that's why he built all those links. And Ice Car definitely on the defensive, but Mal Dragon doesn't know about this gold. Mount Dragon is probably really happy that he's not seeing Banelings. He can stay, yeah, he, he can, can stay, stay Ling, and he doesn't see any roaches, so he's just like, oh man, I'm, I'm okay then. But we are seeing him make 12 roaches. He's actually going to really commit to this, this, uh... But he doesn't know, he doesn't know about the Spire, but it's not like he really needs to, because there's, I, I mean, Ice Guard does have quite a bit He can make eight Mutalisks right now. I wonder why he's not making them. That's one of those things where... It, we can see that it hurts him sometimes to go random. Like, he has some mutalisks now, like, this is when in CBZ, if you played a lot of Zerg, you're like, alright, gotta make these mutas, we gotta do something. Mm -hmm. No, when, when you go mutas, you can't just think of them as just a unit that you're making. They have to do work, they have to get into yeah. that base, they have to pick off some free units, they have to pick off some free drones. Um, just keep that, that, that other person in that base. So you're able to just do whatever it is you want, and then as soon as that other that other the opponent wants to move out, they're gonna have to deal with a huge army that's been macroing up behind that, as well as the mutas that add significant amount of bounce damage. Yeah, and right now you could have twelve mutalisks on the field, which <laughs> would probably turn Devastate. the tide of battle definitely. Yes. So there's three queens, and I think twelve mutas can definitely just snipe all the queens. And Ice Car like not using the mutalisk, and he's getting a bailing nest now. I don't understand. No, it just seems like he he doesn't feel confident about making anything. He wants to have options available, but I mean bailing nest at this point is just kind of futile, especially if you if you would have seen that there's roaches. Yep. And right now is when I would start holding. Yeah, that finally the mutalisk come out when they could have been out like three minutes ago. Doing a bunch of damage. This wouldn't even be a problem if the mutalisks were out right now. The Mount Dragon definitely um, having a better read on his opponent. Not being taken by surprise by those mutas, and then he's just gonna snipe the base. And that's really good. And all he has to do is just keep funneling in roaches, because roaches don't die very quickly. And that's what's that's the scariest part about them. You need like a ling wall for them to not move through, and then you can slowly work them down. But if they yeah. have free reign to move around, they're gonna just take out bases as if it's nothing. Sports going down by uh, Mao Dragon. Definitely, like even if all his roaches die, he knows the mutalisks can do much, and the and the roaches have done a lot of damage. 
20 workers killed, 21, 22, they snipe the spire as well. Ooh, Isgar not in a very good position right now, and what are the upgrades on those roaches? 1-1. One, one. One, one. And more roaches streaming, this is just the never ending roach party. And Loud Dragon knows about this third as well. I mean, he could just take that out with Lings at any time right now. He just needs to get rid of that lair and, you know, just secure his W. And, you know, I, I really feel that even with, um, same thing with Kiaros. Um, not that Kiaros, you know, he, he's a way more experienced player. But I believe both of these both of these players had windows of opportunity in which they could have won. Yeah, I think it has to do with them playing LOL more than they play StarCraft. Mm -hmm. And you know what, that's, that's nobody's fault. Anyone can yeah. play what they want to. And you know, this is definitely for lols right now. Oh, look at those five drones. And now here comes uh, Isgar trying to move in. But you know what, it, it, it does take a bit of the community. I mean, I, it really is a matter of making them feel comfortable. And he's attacking yeah. into six, four queens and a sport and crawler. And sport crawler, and sport crawlers, and the transfuses are going down. This is looking kind of favorable for Isgar at the moment. Not with the roaches, unfortunately. And yeah. that spy, that spore has killed. How many? Does that thing have kills? Eleven kills on that spore so crawler. Probably twelve. So he killed <sighs> all the three of the mutalisks. And now, Ice Guard definitely on the back foot. He can. He rebuilt his spire, even though it's going to start dying because there is no creep around here anymore. Um, and. His money getting really high. He's not making anything. No, he's not. I mean, no. with that much money, you can make some things happen, or at least kind of draw just, out the game. Yeah, make links and you know keep the Harassing pressure on, and just the roach train coming in again. Just way too much. But I mean, even though Isgar didn't make like the best decisions at the time. He did set, us, set himself up for a possible win. It could have happened. So we do have a GG, and uh, congratulations, Uni University of Utah, for taking this best of five between the University of oh, New Mexico. Oh, because there was a forfeit. There was a forfeit, and actually there was another forfeit, because due to uh -huh. UNM turning in their roster a little late, the ace match was already in favor of University of Utah. So all three games had to have won in order for UNM to win in advance and to, to continue into the Division II finals, which the winner gets seven mouse pads. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wait, when are the Division II finals? I don't know. Is, but they'll oh, always... Was this a round of eight, or...? I, I think it's round of 32. Okay. So... Or, I, I actually don't know. I have a hard time reading the CSL website. So basically, you know, um, UNM has made it Past the qualifiers into the round of past 128, both seasons that we've been on the CSL, which is really good. No, that is really good. I mean, for being such a small school, and um, I remember, uh, well, just recently there was an article by a certain person on the CSL website telling, saying his giving his prediction, saying that wins from Uni uh, University of New Mexico would be assured. It would be very easy wins, and I don't necessarily feel that with feel that with Division One. I. I feel the Div Division One has some really good players. I mean, naturally, yeah. there's um, a few players that are going against some people who are absolutely ten times better than them. As, uh, for example, Hello Kitty, Root Caliber. Um, Who's the other one on that team? Beer, I think. They're still on UT Austin, I feel. So, I mean, those are some really great players that they're going against. And, I mean, that 2v2 from Division One, we, we both saw it. And that was yeah. that was absolutely pro. That was very pro game. But uh, thank you, University of New Mexico CSL team and University of Utah and my good friend, Immortal Kid. I love having you around. I love casting with you, man. It's always so fun. Awesome. And everyone... 